Right, Kashmir, uh, infrastructure projects and investment by China, and number three in terms of the uh, overall uh, issues that we have uh, discussed in the last, say, last one week. Or so the responses are also uh, quite uh, swift. Uh, the uh, foreign secretary uh, did mention about the uh, possible options. The uh, Indian ambassador to China, uh, Ambassador Jay Shankar, is in town uh, with the government family and security. Uh, if you trace back the uh, other responses, we uh, come across the uh, December 2000 incident in Daulat Bay Gordi, where we had almost a firing incident between the ITBP and the Chinese Frontier Guards, number one. Number two, Prime Minister Vajpayee, addressing the Commander's Conference, suggested that the border dispute resolution from now on should include issues related to Sakshidam Valley. Uh, that's about 5,180 square kilometers of territory which Pakistan had transferred to China in March 2nd, 1963. Now, a third development, uh, you can say it's a part of coincidence, is the Dalai Lama's visit to Tawang last October, uh, coinciding again with the uh, uh, Mirwais Farooq, the Hussein leader, who was given a visa to visit China by the Chinese NGO, Han Foundation. Uh, he attended a conference there, a seminar there, and an MOU was signed where Chinese universities now will start working on Kashmir-related issues in a research program. Uh, so these are some aspects I think we should keep in mind as the context for the current today's topic. Also some facts related to what is the JNK, what are the sovereignty related issues. Now, in 19th century, the Maharaja of the Jammu and Kashmir had overall roughly about 2,22,236 square kilometers of territory. At that point of time, in 1842, uh, where the northern areas were uh, occupied by the Maharaja, um, uh, incidentally, there was a war between China and uh, the rulers within Hunja in 747, in which the Chinese general was defeated by the local rulers. Uh, currently, 78,000 square kilometers is what we call as uh, the under the Pakistani occupation. This includes the POK with Muzaffarabad as the capital and uh, the northern areas. Mr. Rangashari had just mentioned about Gilead Baltistan <coughs> last year, how this has been incorporated, uh, renamed, uh, on which Kashmiri Uriya's leaders had some reservations in terms of incorporating, as you see, the northern areas in this format. Secondly, you have the 5,180 square kilometers of territory uh, given to China in 1963. Uh, you have 38,000 square kilometers of Aksai chain, which is also part of the 19th century Jammu and Kashmir territories. Uh, in that sense, China is a party to the sovereignty related dispute in this region. In general, the government of India suggests this is a bilateral issue. But actually, in fact, if we go back to the 19th century, then these are lands of Jammu and Kashmir. Um, and then you have roughly about 45% of the entire JNK under currently under the Indian control. Uh, so this is these are some facts. If you go from 19th century to 20, 20th century, this has been divided roughly 35% in Pakistan occupied Kashmir uh, or northern areas, some 17 to 19% in the Chinese uh, control, that is Aksai chain plus the Sashtam Valley. And thirdly, you have roughly about 45% in the Indian control, which is what we see generally uh, in terms of the protests, in terms of the international attention. No one speaks about the human rights violation either in POK or northern areas or in Aksaishin. Uh, we have to be blamed partly because we uh, most of our elections in Jammu and Kashmir are rigged heavily. It's only in the last elections that we had about 24-25% of the voting pattern uh, reflected. So we have to be blamed for not having those transparencies, not having the democratic exercise in GNK.
uh, but then still there are no elections in upside chain, there are no elections in POK or northern areas. So these are some facts. Now, what are the Chinese designs in this area? It's part of the Western development campaign that China had started. Uh, remember Hu Jintao, the current president, was the party secretary in Tibet in the 10th five-year plan, 11th five-year plan. They had allocated something like $250 billion for expansion of the roads, railways, and other infrastructure networks in the western areas. The yellow region that you see now is part of the Western Development Campaign. 16 provinces are located, including those bordering with Pakistan, India, Afghanistan, Central Asia, uh, till up to Myanmar. Now, the second one, a major factor, is of course obviously the sovereignty factor. Um, just one thing, the former Minister, Minister for External Affairs was very confident in 2002 when he said that we are going to now discuss the Western sector. Initially, as a sector-by-sector -sector approach, India and China discussed the middle sector, which is least controversial, that is the Barahoti area, Uttaranchal, Himachal, Tibet areas, bordering Nepal. Uh, we discussed this, we uh, came to some compromise solution, and then we moved on to the Western sector. That's where Prime Minister Vajpayee's speech to the Commanders Conference came in and Chinese shut down most of the discussions on the border. Well, we had a discussion, but nevertheless there is not much uh, content in those discussions. So then we moved on to the format from joint working groups to that of these special representative meetings. There is no progress, 13 meetings have to taken place, but nevertheless. This picture shows you the western sector, since we are discussing about the POK and other areas. Uh, eight areas are in dispute in this area, specifically. <coughs>